Hello everyone, my name is Anton and in this video I want to get into Mermaid for Obsidian or in Obsidian. If you did not know, Obsidian supports diagrams and charts and it does this by leveraging Mermaid. Now Mermaid is a JavaScript based diagramming and charting tool for rendering markdown text. Now Mermaid lets you represent diagrams using text and code and specifically in Obsidian, it lets you do this by leveraging markdown format. So in this video, what I'm gonna do is kind of get you started with how you can create diagrams and charts within Obsidian to maybe show workflows that you might be documenting and then you want to have a visual representation of these workflows. But before we get into the video, go ahead and like and subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. It helps the channel out and it also helps this content get to other users just like yourself. Now with that out of the way, let's continue with the video. Okay, so we're in Obsidian right now and what I'm going to do is open up a new file here and let's split this so that we can show the preview as well. So we'll have one side in preview. Now, just to start on a simple diagram or workflow here, all we really need to do is put in a code block and then within that code block, put some simple code. So we'll start off here adding in a code block. And what we'll do is we'll add in here mermaid, then we will add a graph as such and then we give the graph a name now below here we'll go ahead and indent and we'll add in a node and what we'll do is add an arrow to another node which we'll call b now we can see that we have on the right side here and let's maybe increase the text here so you can see a little bit more maybe bring it down a bit and we have node A, node B, and then what we have here is a, an arrow in between them where it's going from A to B. So it's pretty easily described here in the, in the actual code itself. Now the graph, and then we have this TB. This TB means top to bottom. We can also do, say, left to right in here as well. Uh, there's right to left and there's also bottom to top. So these are different ways you can set the directions for the arrows themselves and into whichever flow you want it to to kind of go in which direction you want it to go within the flow. We'll go ahead and change this back to top to bottom here and we'll go back into this and extend this just a little bit more by adding some text here and what we'll let's just do from left to right maybe it'll look a little bit cleaner and to add a little bit text here we'll just go ahead and do a pipe sign here and then we'll just say text link now you can see that this here we close the the, the actual text for the link in between these two pipes after the arrow and you can see the text is there now going from A to B, we have a text link. So this is pretty simple. The, the formatting is, is, again, it's not that hard to grasp. And it, it really is pretty straightforward and easy, but I'll go through some more here. And if we want to, let's say, extend this a little bit further, we want to Go ahead and add another node in here. Let's add node C. We can see that we can go ahead and extend that out. And you see how easily that, that kind of graphs on the other side. Now, what we could also do here so that it doesn't look like you have to do everything on one line here, we can even take this to a different line. We'll put B here and then add it here. And we can see that it stays the same visually. So if we remove this you can see the link is gone now and the node but if we add it back we get the same representation that we had in a single line now on multiple lines and you can continue this on we can go maybe from c and let's go back to a 
and represent that. So now we have a complete loop that we're showing right now. Now we can also represent this a little bit differently. We'll go ahead and clean this up here. And we'll, let's do a A and B. So we have a couple different boxes here and then a C and a D. So now we have four different nodes that we have here and we can kind of see how this is shaping up to be. And if we go in here and we do, let's put this all on one line just to make it a little bit cleaner. We come in here and put an arrow between those. We can see that now we have A and B and then the A and B are both linking to C and D. If you can see how that's represented here in the visual. So A goes to C and D and B goes to C and D as well. And this is the kind of a simple format on how to create four different links uh, between these, these four nodes, all with only doing uh, pretty much one link representation in the code itself. Now we can take this a little bit further. Let's do another chart here and we will do top to bottom. And what we'll do is we'll get into subgraphs now. So let's do a subgraph. And what the, the subgraph will do is, or what it's really good for is for grouping um, multiple nodes visually. So we'll go back in here and we'll do this A and B again. And then we will end this subgraph. So simply here, we have a group one and that group one has the A and B nodes in there. Now let's create another one. We can come in here and we can copy paste this. And we will make these C and D similar to what we had before and change the group so that they're in different groups. So now we have a group one, we have a group two, and group one we have A and B, and in group two we have C and D. Now if we want to start creating links between them, we can do similar like we had before where we go ahead and put D, let's do D to A. These are in different uh, groups and let's put an arrow there. And now we have the D to A link as shown here. And what we can do is also come in here and put say a B to C. As such, okay? So it just shows links between the different groups and the different nodes within different groups. Now, if we want to, we can similarly do, let's, let's do what we did before here, where we had A and B, the C and D. And we can have that as well, just like we did before. It gets a little messy here, but you can see the all the linking still works as it did before. Now we can also put text in here as well, like we had, had an example before. And let's just do link here, and we can see how all four of the the links or arrows here now have link in the name. And if you want to clean that up, we could also just do these individually. So let's. Go here and do the do yes between here, maybe between B and C. We'll just do no, like such. So you can see how these work. We can do this one from maybe C and then we'll do B here. We'll have those swapped a bit. And you can see how we have top to bottom. Let's do uh, left to right. We can see how that looks. And you can kind of change the order and get everything kind of changed around the way you need them to be. 
Now, another thing that we can do here in Mermaid with the styling is we can also change the shapes of the actual nodes themselves. Um, we can even give them an ID. So if I want to give a node an ID, we can say ID1, and then what we can do is put brackets around it, and then we can say, um, because the brackets here are going to be more of a squared look here. So we'll just do squared and we have the square. And if we go in here and do, let's do ID2 and then we'll do rounded. So we have the rounded corners on there. We can come in here and do an ID3 and let's go ahead and change this one here to be um, a little bit different and we'll see what this looks like here. Let's do the rounded with the squared in there and well, it has the round end so it looks similar to a pill on this one here. Let's try maybe another shape. Let's reverse the order here so ID4 and what we'll do is pipe and then we'll do the brackets on the inside here and let's make this here a cylinder now there are a, a a lot more shapes here if we really want we said the other one was rounded here let's do one more here and let's do two of the uh, brackets here and this one here will be more of a circle so we see all the different shapes here. There are really a lot more shapes and I'll link to the documentation for uh, Mermaid, which gives an example of all the different shapes that you can leverage. Now, not all of the things that you can do in Mermaid by default work in Obsidian. So there may be some trial and error, some things you may have to test and see what works. But for the majority, a lot of the shapes do work that you're going to probably need um, in, in your, your workflows or visual workflows that you're going to create. But just take the note that there are some things that don't work um, out of the box in Obsidian that would work with Mermaid by default in other languages or other tools. Now, let's go ahead and just expand on this here. I'm going to copy and paste the code for this one here to kind of give you a, a bigger view of what a workflow or more complex workflow could look like. Let's go ahead and minimize this a bit and we'll scroll down here. So if you have yourself a workflow, you know, this is, again, a useful way to visualize those workflows into some kind of graph or a diagram so that as you're reading through content you give your self or other people who you might be sending this stuff to some visual context of maybe in, in work instructions or again workflow okay so that was a look at diagrams and workflows within obsidian leveraging mermaid and I hope this was helpful. And if it was, don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Also, I'd really like to get some feedback on the video. What did you like? Maybe what, what can I improve on in the video? Tell me some things that you, you need, maybe wanted to see or have not seen in some of these videos that I've been creating. I really want to add some more content to the channel that's, uh, that helps people out. So when you leave your feedback, it helps me figure out what videos you might like and create more content around that. Okay, so that's going to wrap it up for this video. Until the next time, have a nice day.